Now, something that a lot of people don't realize is understanding the prospect to appointment ratio. Question number one, where do you find potential prospects? Right? Where do you find potential prospects? And what do you say to them when you find them? Let's address these two questions. They are two different things, right? A lot of people say, Sanjay, prospecting is my problem. Okay, which part of prospecting is your problem? There are two parts to prospecting. Number one is the prospect itself. And number two is the approach, the conversation that you start with them. Prospecting is the general term. But which part of prospecting is your real problem? Think about this. Where do I find potential prospects? Or what do I say to them? Because if that's your problem, then we need to identify what's the problem. Let's think about what are the different ways that we can get prospects, right? Number one is, well, this is what a lot of us do, is uh, we do cold calling, right? Uh, pick up the phone, talk to random people. When you talk to random people, the question is, what do you talk? Some of you have scripts, right? They're cold calling scripts. By the way, guys, I've never done a cold call in my life. Uh, uh, some of my mentees, you know, they gave me this idea. They said, Sanjay, uh, you know, we have all these guys who are generating leads. Uh, and uh, they give us these leads and we call up these people. I said, okay, so you, you're using this lead generation platform. Uh I got my team to do some lead generations for me, right? Uh, I had one mentee tell me something very funny a few months ago. She said, Sanjay, who would not like to work with someone like you? I mean, you're a top financial advisor. Why would somebody say no to you? And I said, well, okay. I mean, it's very good for my ego, guys. I mean, let me be very transparent, right? It is very good for my ego to hear the words that Sanjay, who will say no to you? It's very good for my ego. But I also get reality checks, right? It's uh, it's important for you to understand that I have a lot of reality checks. So I told my team, can you generate some leads for me, right? Can you generate some, uh, uh, some leads for me from this online system? So I... So my team actually generated some leads, right? They generated about 10 leads for me. And uh, I called these people. Now, I've never done cold calling in my life. And I realized I don't like talking to them. Because if I don't like you, right? I don't know what to speak to you. And that's the problem. If I don't like you, I don't know you. I don't know what to speak to you and the conversation becomes very dry very soon. But I did leave them with some value. So one thing I did do was I agreed that when I do cold calling, I practiced it, right? I tried it. When I do cold calling, I will leave them with value, but I will not sell to them because I learned one thing. If I'm working with people I don't like, I will regret that in the future. You know, everyone says, uh, YOLO. You only live once. Don't die with regrets. That's what people say. Guys, let me get one thing very clear. If you're dead, you have no regrets. Right? If you're dead, you have no regrets. You're already dead. What regret you have now? The problem is you don't want to live a life of regrets. You've got this wrong. Don't live a life of regrets. You will probably, you will die. And once you're dead, you don't have regrets. Let's get that very clear. Nobody has regrets after they are dead, but they have regrets while they are alive. Let's get that very clear. So it's not YOLO, it's YODO. You only die once. Don't live a life of regrets. It's not that you don't die with regrets. Don't live a life of regrets. So when you're choosing clients today, choose those clients that you truly like working with. Otherwise, you will be living a life of regret because you will be servicing people you don't like. You'll be talking to people you don't like and you'll be required to take care of them you don't like because you have promised them services, right? So 
the most important ideas to execute for prospecting number one is asking for recommendations ask for recommendations on the type of clients you like to work with now i know some of you are still doing cold calling go ahead i mean it's a good time to practice i love cold calling because it's practicing i don't sell to anyone i cold call but i love to practice with them i give them i practice my presentation i handle their objections i handle their refusals and i don't care because i don't want to sell to them anyways for me they are prospecting um it's just like a doctor right you do surgery on a cold body right they're already dead you don't do surgery on a real, you don't practice on a real person you practice on a dead person for me cold calling is already practicing on a dead person so that's what i do networking guys given 2020 is a very unique strategy for networking right how many of you have joined virtual networking groups if you haven't joined please do because when you join these virtual networking groups right you get to practice on the art of conversation i mean the practicing uh, uh practicing a conversation on zoom or practicing a conversation on a video call you need to learn you need to practice this imagine i'm going to be talking to a computer i'm not seeing any of you and i'm talking to a computer for the next so many hours how do i have this conversation what's the structure that i follow what is the i need to practice that as well i don't have notes but i need to practice it so learn to have conversations with a computer sometimes right but the passion and the energy also needs to flow through and that comes with practice so how do you use your hands how do you use the tone of your voice how do you use your facial expression when you're on the phone do you sound happy do you sound excited do you sound sad do you s- you know your voice plays such an important role in how clients feel which text messaging doesn't do so a lot of people ask me sanjay do you have a text message script that i can send to a client yeah you do have there are many scripts out there but they don't work guys they don't work so join some virtual networking meetings previously you could do road shows right now you can't do road shows um so instead of road shows ask for more recommendations that's what made 2020 so different because 2020 showed you that you can have virtual networking events 2020 showed that you can create interest groups you know you can create people that organize it online join interest groups uh i'll give you an example so rolls royce um came up with a app for all rolls royce owners called whispers you can join that app if you already have or own a rolls royce and you can introduce yourself to other rolls royce owners fascinating they created a networking opportunity for all rolls royce owners to be able to have conversation that app just started this year i mean there you go i now got a virtual networking app with all the people who own rolls royces around the world there are many other apps like that uh, i joined a networking website called lunch club right where i get to meet with people that i don't know of but we have similar interests and the uh, and we get to meet virtually not with the op- opportunity to sell but with the opportunity to have a conversation so i get to practice my pitch i get to practice how i introduce myself i'll get to see how other people introduce their businesses to me right because they are introducing their business you are introducing your business fascinating so it was it was quite an interesting uh, uh it was quite an interesting experience i mean i've been speaking to all my mentees right and i asked them um there was one of my mentees who's been selling insurance via gaming right um so he he likes gaming and uh, he started creating relationships while playing the game uh there was another one uh there's actually this this uh uh this mentee of mine who specializes with the uh, uh social media influencers right so he is a financial advisor only for social media influencers because social media influencers have a very erratic income right so one month they have money next month they don't have money sometimes they only get a uh, product benefit so they, i mean they don't actually get paid but they get to experience a certain lifestyle uh so they don't actually get paid for it but they get to live a particular lifestyle 
so they actually don't know how to maintain it for a long period of time so he actually works with social media influencers and he has specialized in providing services to social media influencers because they're earning money but it's very erratic right some months are good some months are bad um sometimes they get paid sometimes they don't get paid sometimes they get barters so you know they get product rather than actual money um so he has specialized with social media influencers very interesting uh, process another one of mine uh, another one of my mentees has started doing online meetups right so he invites his clients to an online meetup and he creates a networking opportunity for his existing clients to talk to each other so he will it's usually the online meetup has not more than 5 people so he was sharing the structure with me um it's not something i do it's one of what my mentees does right so he organizes uh online meetups of about 4 to 5 business owners where they all introduce each other and they like um you know this is a friend of mine they introduce each other they talk about their businesses and he has created what we call mini ecosystems uh within his client group very interesting concept um works well for him i have done something similar but on a different way so what i do is i always ask my clients is there something i can do to help you or is there someone i should introduce you that can help you with your business when was the last time a financial advisor asked their client is there someone i could introduce you that would help your business you see a lot of clients don't realize that our network is also very good think about it i mean i'm working with clients who are in 53 countries some of them are doctors some of them are lawyers some of them are engineers some of them are it professionals some of them are running businesses some of them are running logistics some of them have their own manufacturing and i've got so many clients i've got 6000 clients today that's a very powerful network I just started asking my clients right now. I've never not done this before, so let me be very transparent, guys. I've not really done this before, but during this pandemic, I realized why don't I leverage on the power of my network to introduce people to each other? So I asked the client. I was like, "Is there someone I can introduce you to, or is there a particular type of person you want to know that would help your business in 2020?" And they said, "Sanjay." Wow, no one has ever asked me that question and now that you asked me that question I have actually never thought about it. I mean, is there someone you can introduce me to and I was like do you need an introduction to a lawyer? Do you need an introduction to a new supplier? Do you need an introduction to some new potential buyers? Uh and if yes, what would you like me to introduce you as? I mean, what what should I introduce you as? You see your clients themselves have not asked for recommendations in the past why the answer is we don't know all of us are scared of asking for recommendations but once you learn how to do it properly you will never run out of prospects and that's the current situation i am in right now i get recommended to work with so many people that now i actually don't have the time to meet all the people that i've been asked to meet in the year 2009 uh my father did have a brain stroke and i had a very bad q1 i had a horrible q2 and a pathetic q3 and i did not even think i will hit my target so i told my father i was like dad i think this year i'm not going to hit my q2 And that was the first time he sat me down and he said, "How far are you?" And I said, "I, I have not done any work. I mean, Q1, Q2, Q3, I was pretty much in hospital with you, so I haven't really done any work." He's like, "Don't use my illness as an excuse to not hit your targets." And I was like, "But it's not an excuse; it's the reality." He said, "Sanjay, it's an excuse." you still have q4 set up the correct structure for q4 and you can still hit your target and that year my target was to do my tot that was the first time i actually hit my tot within 4 months now why am i sharing this with you 
Q4 plays a very important role in hitting your targets. If you feel that you're lost and you're not getting the right strategy for Q4, you should attend Final Sprint because I will be sharing my strategy for Q4. Q4 is the most important quarter for my business. So I look forward to seeing you at the Final Sprint.